the UNHCR, as of 31st of March of 2018, there are 481,226 refugees in Kenya. Now, out of those, 56.7% are from Somalia, 23.7% are from South Sudan, 7.7% DRC, while 5.8% are from Ethiopia, 2.8% are from Burundi, 2.1 Sudan and 0.5 uh, Uganda, Rwanda and Eritrea. Now, out of this, where the refugee reside in Kenya, 47% are from Dadaab. If you can they just get uh, that uh, sort of data to just appear. Yes, 50s. This is the wrong one. But anyway, what re where refugees reside in Kenya, 47% are from Dadaab, 39% from Kakuma, and 14% from urban areas. Now, there was a, a survey that was conducted on a perception of Kenyans towards refugees. Now, the question, one of the questions that was asked was, do you support or oppose your local government providing services to refugees? And 37% of Kenyans supported this, 22% strongly opposed, 19% um, strongly supported and 12% opposed while 1% said they did not know and I just want us to have this conversation right now and joining me is Sudia is Ambassador Mohammed Abdi Afe from UNHCR special envoy for the Somalia refugee station seated immediately to my right next to him is Starling Roop who is a policy analyst at International Rescue Committee Policy thank you very much a gentleman for making time to join us here on KTN News Desk. Now, we've just seen some of the statistics. How is the refugee situation right now, Ambassador? Well, first of all, as a special envoy for the High Commissioner for, <clears throat> for the Somalia refugee situation, yes. which is a situation beyond the context of Kenya, uh, because you know that since Somalia civil war started in 1991, yes. there was massive displacement of the Somali population. Mm -hmm. So we have about one million Somali refugees in the region mm. of Kenya, Ethiopia, Djibouti, Uganda, and Yemen. Yes. And uh, this is a situation that const demands constant attention mm. because of the fact that, you know, 27 years ago, great majority of these people left Somalia. You are talking about third generation of Somalis in this region. Yes. And in particular, in a, in a country like Kenya, in the Dab, uh, we're speaking about 45% about of the refugee population. Now, most of them born here. They've yes. never seen Somalia, but they're refugees here in Kenya. Mm -hmm. And so the situation uh, of demands of us globally, the countries that host, like Kenya, who we thank very, very much mm -hmm. uh, for constant attention and monitoring to, to, to know their needs, to understand what the requirements they have, so that we can constantly remind ourselves of our obligations, not only globally, but even as human beings towards others. And I'm so glad uh, when I see the assessment already done, that the uh, great majority of, of Kenyan population still feel very compassionate to support refugees. All right, Stalin, you conducted the survey. Uh, what is Kenyan's perception on refugees? I think generally Kenyan perceptions are very positive of refugees. And I think that's despite uh, the fact that only about a quarter of Kenyans, 26% of Kenyans, mm -hmm. um, have actually had a personal interaction with a refugee themselves. Um, yet we see that actually Kenyans are pretty aware about what makes someone a refugee, though there is a bit of confusion about an IDP or someone who is displaced uh, because of uh, a natural disaster or something like that. So I think despite the low opportunity to interact with refugees, Kenyans are fairly aware and, and I think their, their, their good nature um, shows through as well. Um, and that maybe there's, there's an opportunity for policy to catch up to where perception and where the Kenyan people stand. Okay. Uh, now you've talked about one million refugees in the region uh, so far. I think in Kenya, around 776,000 Somalis have been taken back home. What challenges does repatriation face? First of all, I think that it's important to underline that this repatriation exercise is a voluntary exercise of those Somalis who feel that it's time to go back home. Mm -hmm. And we have about 76,000 to nearly 80,000 over yeah. the last three years of Somalis who have voluntarily gone back. Inside Somalia, we have got over 130,000 from Yemen, from Djibouti, who have come back and returned into the country. So yes. the biggest challenge is, of course, the conditions inside the country.
great parts of Somalia, the conditions are still such that they require more work to be done. Yeah. The infrastructure has been destroyed by the civil war. Security situation is still not um, to, the, to the standards that uh, many will feel comfortable to return back. And we are asking the international community to support the Somali government to create conditions inside the country mm. to allow many more people to come back. Yes. Because you will appreciate, and I traveled in the sub-region extensively to speak, in, particularly to Somali refugees. They don't want to become refugees forever. At some stage in their life, they would like to have a dignified return. Mm -hmm. So what we need to work on is that return that is dignified, that is voluntary. So the conditions inside the country still need more work to be done. Yes. However, people continue to register daily for voluntary return, and we, uh, as UNHCR, continue to support who wish to voluntarily go back. Do you have any who do not want to return to their country? Yes, yes, quite a number. In fact, if you look at the camp population, the number that have registered to return and the number that are up to stay, the up to stay are more. Yes. So that is why we want to plead with the Kenya government, with the other governments in the region, to be more patient, to support those who feel that it's not time to go back home, mm -hmm. and above all, to international community to support countries like Kenya yes. to cope up with the challenges that are brought about as a result of continued hosting of refugees, not only Somalis. I mean, you've talked about many other countries yes. that have got citizens here waiting to go back one day. We don't know which day they will, but yes. that day will come one day, hopefully. Of course, as we wait for them to go back, those who do want to go back, there are those that want to remain in Kenya, and of course, they have to be integrated to the community. Are Kenyans really open to integration with refugees? I think it's, it's nuanced. Asking our Kenyans open to integration, integration means many different things to yes. many different people. Yes. Um, so kind of wholesale integration, when we ask Kenyans, they're, they're mixed. Um, but when we ask about important components of integration, mm -hmm. um, like government services, about the ability to move around the country, to get jobs, I think there's, there is strong support there. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I think what's really, really important to, to notice is as the statistic you showed about the county governments. 56% of Kenyans support county <coughs> governments providing services to refugees. Yes. Um, and 85% of Kenyans support integrated service delivery from NGOs like the International Rescue Committee yes. um, to both host communities as well as refugees. So I think, I think there's there's a lot of nuance in the, in the, in the talk about integration, mm -hmm. but, but in general, I think Kenyans are op more open to integration than I think has been expected in the past or, or without the important you know, empirical data that we were able to collect recently. All right, so then, but, yes. But you know, just, just to add to what uh, has said, and it's very important what Kenyans feel, mm -hmm. I think what we are advocating for is not really more integration. What we are advocating for is inclusion. Yes. It's inclusion of refugees in the national programs, in the national services, so that this population feel that they are catered for. Mm. And we are asking the international community, the, the donor community, to support countries like Kenya, Ethiopia, Uganda, mm -hmm. uh, in order to have more inclusion of these services, because inclusion also means, essentially, that resources are required. Yes. So I'm glad that the Kenya government, uh, and within the framework of EGAN, they have uh, comprehensively agreed in Nairobi in March 2017 to have the inclusion of more refugees in national programs, in national activities, within the concept of what we now call, globally, we call the CRRF. Yes. Comprehensive Refugee Response Framework, which also Im Im means that the international community have an obligation to help mm -hmm. the countries mm -hmm. in providing support for more inclusion of these refugees to mm -hmm. in the national programs and the national activities. So we are now looking more as a solution yeah. to the inclusion of refugee services in the national plans of the countries that they are hosting. All right, but then I'm just wondering what rights or services are refugees entitled to? Now, all the rights, all the basic rights that we are all entitled to, from healthcare mm -hmm. to education, and education is the most important basic services that you can give to refugee children yes. so they can have the necessary skills to develop the countries that host them, because we, re we require them to contribute also to the countries that host them, but also much more to when they return. So okay. education is an important pillar. Health services is a very important pillar. Housing and uh, and, and, and nutrition service is also quite an important pillar. Yes. Therefore, I think it's almost everything that you require as a human being mm -hmm. that the service the refugees also require. All right. Above all, the refugees have got security. I mean, we are very happy that Kenya government and the countries that have hosted have provided the necessary security environment mm. for them to thrive and to enjoy. But I think that a lot more needs to be done in the actual services 
of care for refugees, which, right. which I think uh, organizations like IRC have been also been a strong partner of UNHCR. You've mentioned security, and we will come back to that. But the Kenyan government has been wanting to shut down um, refugee camps for a while now. Of course, this was stopped by the High Court. But then during your survey, did Kenyans share the same sentiments as the government? Because most of them are saying uh, there's security issues, especially in the refugee camps, because most of them are intels to terrorists. Um, so while that is often a narrative that exists here in Kenya, yeah. I think that there's, there's very little evidence to link refugees yes. to security uh, concerns. Yet we also see that Kenyans themselves, it was about 27% of Kenyans mm -hmm. felt uh, that uh, security, that, that the, one of the primary issues around hosting refugees was a security threat. But nearly 50%, 48% of Kenyans yes. saw it as helping those in need. So mm -hmm. I think that really shows you that almost twice as many think primarily about helping those in need rather than security. And, and, and part of it is, well, here we are now on the, on the media talking about, uh, about security issues yes. and refugees. Mm -hmm. And that was one of the things we also learned from, from Kenyans where they get information about refugees. Yes. It's primarily from radio and television. And what are the main messages they're hearing are about closing the camps, yes. about security issues. Um, so I think there's a, it's an onus on, on UNHCR, on IRC, on, on civil society here in Kenya to talk more about the positives, mm -hmm. you know, the, 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 the Refugees are an asset to Kenya, yes. um, and they, they have a lot of potential that can really be unleashed if policy can catch up with uh, citizen perception. So then how so, can we help refugees become more self-reliant in terms of getting a job and giving something, doing something for their future, not only just for their host communities? Well, first of all, I think I just want to join uh, uh, my brother here yes. in, in the fact that refugees are an asset, the real an asset for Kenya. I mean, we have seen that the settings in the camps, and the study has been done by international financial institutions, particularly in Kakuma, and the, the economy of that county continues to thrive mainly because of the refugee contribution. Mm -hmm. The same as it is also in the DAP, yes. because they contribute substantially well into the local economy, into the county economy, and generally into the national economy. Mm -hmm. Above all, of we have also the whole issue of remittances that come yes. to refugees from relatives and, and, and friends, and that also contributes to the economy of the country. So I don't actually buy the idea that they are a security threat. Mm. In fact, we have not seen any convictions of any refugee on any particular crime associated with the terrorism. Yes. If you look at, uh, at the victim, the, at the culprits who have been arraigned in court, it has not been a single refugee. Yeah. So the narrative that the refugees are a threat, I think, is something that we need to, 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 to relook at it. And, and I hope that the country has already begun to appreciate, particularly government begins to appreciate that these are assets that we need to nurture. So yes. what can we do? I think we can do a lot. And the Kenya government is now leading the way. They are now investing in the DAB. The president has announced the establishment of a vocational training college mm -hmm. in the DAB, which we have really welcomed and we thank him. This is going to produce a, a, a population of young refugees, yes. not only refugees, but even the host community will begin to benefit from this particular facility, mm -hmm. which will contribute to the economy of Kenya and, of, of course, when they return back to the economy of the country of origin. Yes. So the, the, the other aspect, of course, is education of of, of the refugees themselves, yeah, yeah. which I said, the establishment of universities, uh, scholarships that we are actually trying to now, as UNHCR, uh, pursue with the countries that uh, are, are able to receive many more in their universities. So a lot can be done for refugees, but the, the, the one that we, they really need basic is to be given the opportunity. And the whole issue of an encampment, I think, in my, in my, as yeah. a Kenyan and yeah. as an envoy, we need to review keeping people in camps. Uganda, they don't have camps. Yes. They have got settlements. Djibouti, they have just abolished the issue of camps. I think this encampment of people in one area for a long period of time mm -hmm. is very depressing and it's something that I think our country needs. And the countries like Kenya, yes. Ethiopia, need to review as soon as possible because uh, it, it empowers much more yes. uh, refugees to contribute positively. Yes, Ambassador here has talked about Uganda and we've seen Uganda completely, you know, welcome refugees. What can Kenya learn from Uganda? I think Uganda has been really, they've been able to tap into, um, you know, this, this narrative where we have, are, is, are refugees a burden or an asset? I think yes. they've really viewed them as an asset. Yes. Yeah. Um, and I think in Kenya, particularly with the long protracted um, displacement, we've got this 
big well of talent that's trapped behind a wall in Kakumo or in, in Dadaab, and they want to contribute to the economy. <laughs> and they, and their fellow Kenyans support them being able to move around the country to, to get work permits and, and, and to be able to contribute, you know, to pay taxes. Yes. Um, and, and, and so I think Kenya can you learn from Uganda in that being more open to allowing um, after you know registration and, and documentation, allowing them the opportunity um, to integrate more into the social economic mm -hmm. um, fabric of the country is is a real benefit. And and I think again, as uh, as the ambassador highlighted, the the example in uh, Turkana about refugees con contribution to the economy. Yes. Um, that's a really that's a, that's a good example for how that can be replicated across uh, across Kenya. Right. Um, and but I think it's allowing that. Uh, giving those fundamental building blocks of kind of ability to uh, engage in livelihood activities and and also to move around mm -hmm. to be able to 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 engage in those those are really fun. So then, going forward, do you think we need more policies to be implemented to help refugees? Yeah, I think that we need to have a mental shift about whether actually they are a burden or yeah. an asset. I think once we all realize that this is an asset, and we have seen it globally. In fact, some of the refugee children who left the DAP to for resettlement in the U.S. are now very important personalities there. I mean, we have a lady who is now running for the Congress in the U.S. who was here in, in Kenya in the DAP refugee camp. Yes. We have a model from Kakuma, born in Kakuma. Mm -hmm. She's now a global icon. She's a model for a first hijabi uh, yes. model. So these are ambassadors of Kenya, too. Mm. They reflect very well on Kenya, on Uganda, on Ethiopia, on all these countries who have been generous enough to host. Mm -hmm. So I think what we need to have is to have a shift of mind, see them as human beings, as because you can be a refugee tomorrow. Yes, who, true. Nobody's insulated from this issue of being a refugee. It's mm -hmm. a situation that can come to anybody in any country. And globally now, we have a we have warring trends. We have got South Sudan producing refugees daily. We have got Somalia, which is not producing refugees as much, but at least we have got the large numbers of refugees outside. We have got Yemen. We have got Syria. So globally, we have got all these challenges. And these people don't choose to become refugees. Yes. So I think we need to change our psyche. We need to change our attitude towards them, be compassionate, help this population in order to thrive like, like the way we wish to thrive. Mm. And, and that begins with you, me, it begins with the policies, it begins with the government. And of course, it also means that we must put the right policies in place. Okay. Now, in all the countries, including our own constitution here, the policies are pro refugee welfare. All right. We only need to implement it to the letter. All right, Stelling, I'll let you have the final word. What do you think needs to be done no, going I, forward? I agree with the ambassador that, and he mentioned the CRF process, and yes. there's going to be a global compact on refugees mm -hmm. in the United Nations in September. I think Kenya is becoming a leader, and, and, and the region is definitely a leader. Mm -hmm. um, and I think there, there's opportunities um, to capitalize um, to push the you know to push the push the envelope a little bit yeah. to to learn from Ethiopia from Uganda uh, and to live up to these commitments that uh, that the government has made yeah. um, with the Nairobi Declaration that's a real opportunity yes. um, and there's also some legislation potentially with a new refugee bill um, being uh, being introduced so so I think there's a lot of opportunities and mm -hmm. I think the government can capitalize on that um, and and really open the door and turn you know really turn refugees into into the asset they should be yeah. in terms of, in the Kenyan economy and, and the Kenyan society. All right, I just want to add to, yes. to the support, you yeah. know, because the support also must come from our friends. The partners and the donors must have a robust engagement to support host countries. Mm. We cannot allow only countries that are hosting to take the, the overall burden. I think this responsibility must be shared. Yes. And this is how the CRRF concept comes into being. Mm. So countries that are big enough, that have a big economy, we are appealing to them to support the countries that have taken a large number of this international responsibility sharing in hosting the refugees. All right, all right. before we finish, uh, UNHCR are working on a new deal for refugees. Uh, known as the Global Compact on yes. Refugees. What does this entail? What well, this is change is a shift on how you protect the refugees and asylum space. Okay. It means that we need to, first of all, support the countries that host. It means that we need to allow the refugees to thrive and to be able to grow. Mm -hmm. and, this is, and this is appealing now for globally mm -hmm. for, as an approach 
towards uh, the inclusion of refugees in national plans. So it's a, a question of resource mobilization for the refugees and for the host countries. Yes. It's a question of sharing the burden by those countries that have a big economies. It's, it's, it's therefore, it's a wholesome, it's a new way of managing refugee protection and providing them with a more asylum space. All right, thank you very much, Ambassador Mohammed Abdi Afe from much. UNHCR, Special Envoy for the Somali Refugee, and of course, the Stalin Group International Rescue Committee Policy Analyst. Thank you very much, gentlemen, very for much. making time to join us here on KTN News Desk. Now to a story of refugee resilience, Kakuma Refugee Camp, inter